In this video, I want to take a look at, in general, how hormones do their job. If you take an endocrine system course on its own, you'll get this in much more detail. This is just to give us an overview of how all of this works. Hormones work by interacting with their receptors on their target cells. That's a simple sentence. In fact, if you read a textbook, they will even say that sentence or a variation of that. But what does it mean? Hormones work by interacting with the receptors on the target cell. The target cell is what we're trying to make a change in. So we're trying to make a change in that target cell. And it does that by interacting with a receptor, a docking area. So for right now, think of a person trying to meet with a boss and they have a receptionist. So you want to have some sort of change. You want to meet the boss to make a change, to institute a change. So this is what we're looking at here. Hormones work by interacting with our receptors, the receptionist, who's going to bring that information in with the target cell, with the boss. The more receptors the hormone interacts with, the stronger the response is going to be. So the more receptionists that deal with the hormone, the more important it is, and the more it's going to get done. Receptors are usually specific for a single hormone. So a hormone usually interacts with a specific type of receptor. These receptors can be found in two general places. They can either be found outside-ish the cell or inside-ish the cell. And what I mean by the whole ish thing is, if it's outside the cell, it means that it's either on or within the cell membrane. Meaning, this hormone can't actually get into the cell. And so it's going to interact with a receptionist, i.e. receptor, on the cell membrane or embedded somewhere within the cell membrane. The inside-ish of the cell means that the hormone will interact either within the cytoplasm, recall from cell biology, the cytoplasm can be the, the gel in the middle or organelles, or it can interact with the nucleus itself. So, sum this up, the receptors can be on or within the cell membrane, or within the cell, the cytoplasm, or the nucleus. Taking a look at proteins and peptides, these do not pass through the cell membrane. They're not getting through. So what winds up happening is they go to see the boss and the receptionist is at the door. And the receptionist goes, nope, you can't come in here. You give me the message and I'll bring the message to the boss. And that's what happens here. The protein is going to interact with a receptor on or in the cell membrane then that receptor is going to generate a secondary messenger. The secondary messenger is then going to bring that message to where it needs to eventually go. So proteins don't cross the membrane. They interact with a receptor on or in the cell membrane. A secondary messenger is created. There are three types of secondary messenger. So for example, there can be three types of messages brought to the boss. The boss could get an email, a text message, or a post-it note. In our case, in the biology world, these three different things are CAMP, cyclic adenosine monophosphate. And no, that's not a mistake with a little c. It's how it's written. We have the plasma membrane phospholipid. And we have calcium calmodulin. The CAMP, the cyclic adenine monophosphate, this is the most common secondary messenger around. So this would be the email in the business world now. This is the most common way of communication. So CAMP is the most common secondary messenger we have. What happens is it activates a protein kinase A, which causes phosphorylation that can turn on or off target enzymes. If you recall from cell metabolism, I know you have to remember all these previous lessons, phosphorylation we're messing with a phosphate group. We are modifying a phosphate group. And what this does is it either activates or deactivates a target enzyme. And that's how it's going to interact. Again, a little oversimplified. And if you take an endocrinology course, you'll get this in much more detail. The second two messenger systems are the plasma membrane phospholipid, 
the interaction of the hormone and receptor activated membrane bound enzyme phospholipidase C. The phospholipase C causes phosphorylation in the cell membrane and splits into a secondary messenger. The calcium calmodium basically causes an influx of calcium within the cell. So those were our three messenger systems. Steroids are, and steroids and thyroid hormones are so much easier, okay? What winds up happening here is steroids are lipids. They are fat soluble. What we mean by this is that it's dissolved by lipids. And hey, cell membrane review, the cell membrane is mostly composed of lipids. So steroids and thyroid hormones easily diffuse through that cell membrane. They get to talk right to the boss. So they're going into the office, the receptionist comes up to them and they go, no, 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 I'm gonna go talk to the boss man. And they go right in. In fact, they're going to deal with the DNA and cause protein changes on their own. They bind to a particular DNA sequence, they can activate or deactivate it. And because it's interacting directly with the protein production, this can take hours for effects to even become evident. In our next video, we're gonna start taking a look at the location and anatomy of the glands. Once we have that done, then we'll start to take a look at the individual glands and the hormones they produce.